Today I'm going to show you how to make a grape soda recipe just like Fanta or Crush. And it's relatively simple. It's basically 11 flavor ingredients, some simple syrup, and a little bit of citric acid and coloring if you want. Now, these are the original recipes. Uh, this comes from a book written by Mitchell Freeman. Some of the ingredients are hard to get and I haven't been able to find them. And one of the ingredients is cinnamol anthranolate, which is no longer allowed in food. So I've reformulated it and created a formula sheet for you. You can find this over on Patreon. Supporting the channel does help let me do things like this so you can actually make a genuine grape soda. And all the information in that allows you to do it in one sheet. And you can also get sourcing information for the, these ingredients. I had to use three different suppliers to get them. But you can simplify that by just using methyl anthranolate. Now, this is what most people assume grape soda or the base flavor of grape soda is. And it works perfectly fine. The only caveat is that it can sometimes react with other ingredients and can form a brown precipitate or change the flavor. So in the perfume world, you'll use, a, use methyl anthranolate to create a shifts base. And basically it reacts with aldehydes. And the smell of it kind of reminds me of a mall in Las Vegas, of all places. But it is used in the perfume world. We try to avoid that happening in here because it does change the flavor. So to do that, we use dimethyl anthranolate, which smells pretty much the same, uh, but is more stable. And along with that, I'm going to use some ethyl anthranolate. And that's just a slight modification of the methyl version. And what you're doing when you combine different anthranolates is you're just kind of making the flavor more broad and interesting. A lot of people just think this is like a singular ingredient and historically it probably was back in the 1800s, but today it's a lot more complex. And the one thing you'll note about anthranolates, uh, they have an orange note, so kind of like Neroli. So if you've done the Coca-Cola video and you have a bottle of Neroli sitting around, it is expensive. It may actually work in this recipe in a very tiny amount because these grape flavors also have a relationship with orange flavor, specifically orange flower. So once you have those two primary ingredients, you build upon those, those make up about 50% of the formula. And then ethyl lactate is added. Uh, this is just an ethereal element, kind of like ethyl acetate. Uh, it does have kind of a, a buttery note to it. So it kind of rounds out the flavor. Now you won't confuse it with butter, but it does just have that note. And it kind of, kind of expands on the flavor. The next one is ethyl cinnamate. And this is the thing with these grape flavors. There's three primary components, the anthranolates, cinnamates, and at the end, a wintergreen element. And that's really what this artificial grape flavor turns out to be. You'll find there's ethyl cinnamate and cinnamol butyrate, which is another cinnamon-like note, and cinnamol propionate. And these are all just esters, and they kind of create that kind of artificial grape flavor that we associate with these sodas, but they're just simple esters. Now, this is grape butyrate. This is another ester, and it does have a grape, more of a white grape note as opposed to that red grape note. But this is a more natural grape flavor, kind of like in the wine grape category. And then ethyl butyrate, you may see this one in pineapple, but all it does is really add a fruitiness to this because the anthranolates, they do have a perfume note and they are used in perfumery as well. Uh, so you really wanna kind of use some esters to boost that uh, fruitiness because obviously this is trying to replicate kind of a Concord grape flavor. And then this is ethyl heptanoate. Uh, this is, comes from the distillation of the lees for cognac production or from wine production. So you could use cognac oil. So this is green cognac oil. This is a little bit more expensive, but they distill it from yeast. Uh, whereas this is just an ester, isolated ester, and it works. So you can use either one of those. Uh, probably don't need as much cognac oil uh, in this as the ethyl heptanoate, 
But these four ingredients here make up about 90% of the flavor. So you could add uh, cinnamaldehyde or another cinnamon note in a much lower quantity if you want to keep this recipe simple. Now this is orange crystals. They kind of, again, they have that neroli orange flower aroma. So it just kind of complements the uh, anthranolates. And then you end up with this, but before we end up with this actually, wintergreen. Now this is the core flavor in root beer. It's kind of minty and kind of got that wintergreen flavor. Use it in a very small amount, but this really does pull this into that uh, grape soda flavor. And uh, it, it really helps. I think this is probably a key ingredient to really get that flavor. So you can use wintergreen oil or uh, methyl salicate uh, you can buy that, but winter green oil works. It's pretty much 98% methyl salicate. Now that you have all the ingredients, what you're gonna do is just follow the formula sheet and mix them and create your flavor concentrate. So just add the amounts using a $20 balance, uh, weigh them into a bottle. This is enough to make about 320 liters of finished soda when you're done. So you'll be use, using 10 mils of this to make a flavor dilution, and I've talked about flavor dilutions in the past. This is just way too concentrated to use. It's even way too concentrated to dose into a syrup. So you really need to dilute it with some alcohol. And uh, the recipe does call for glycerin in there as well. If you don't have alcohol, you could probably use propylene glycol. Triethyl citrate and vodka would probably work 50-50. Uh, again, you don't want to use too much triethyl citrate. It's a great solvent, but at high levels, it does leave a bit of a flavor. So you want to kind of keep it a little bit low, but alcohol is still always going to be your best solvent and 65% or 60% is what we want. And then what we're going to do is put it all together. So let me show you how to do that. I'll just get set up for that. Now to make this is really simple. What you want to do is take your grape flavor. And again, I always mention that you should age this for three days after you combine everything. And seven days is better. So this has been sitting around for seven days. And what I'm going to do is weigh out 12 grams of this, which is roughly 15 mils. And 11.95 should be close enough. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to add 80 mils of alcohol to this. So you just add it straight in. You can weigh it out if you want, but 80 mils is going to be good enough. And then we're gonna add some glycerin to this. So roughly 15 grams or 20 mils, somewhere in there. Uh, glycerin's probably optional in this case. Uh, it, Historically, it was used to add body, and it's not going to add a lot of body to this, but it was used as a preservative, or it can also help with flavors. And then what you're going to do is let this stir until everything dissolves. Now that all of that is dissolved, you just typically transfer it to a 120 ml bottle, and then let it sit for a couple days. Again, aging is important. Today, I'm just going to use it straight out of the beaker. It should be fine. But uh, this aging step does bring everything together and you get a more consistent product. Now this is the fairly easy part. You're just going to take some simple syrup and this is one to one simple syrup. So I take 650 grams of sugar and I fill it up with hot water up at about 950, 900 mils, uh, just leaving a little space to work. And that's it, that is your simple syrup. So I like to use these bottles because they have a scale on them and they make it easy to work with. So once you get that going, just put a magnetic stir and get this rolling. It's still a little bit warm, but you wanna make sure it's stirring when you add this. And what I'm going to do is just weigh out 12 grams of my flavor dilution. Now you can do 15 mils with this, uh, just because of density, it does change the weight. So it's 12, roughly 12 grams or 15 mils. Now that we got a, a good vortex going, we're just gonna add that straight in. 
If you're following the formula in the book, that would be it. Now, I do like to add a little citric acid to this just because uh, it does make it a little more shelf stable and not so cloyingly sweet. Now, I'm only adding five grams. You can use tartaric acid if you want, but a little acid just drops the pH down enough that you're not going to have to worry about shelf stability. So just tear that and five grams. So 5.02 is sufficient. Now you can always add a little sodium citrate. If you've watched the acid video, sodium citrate can bring the pH up or help balance it if you find that necessary. So with the acid, I just add a little bit of water to pre-dissolve it. Again, you always wanna add your acids at the end. And that's why I leave a little bit of room in here so that I have some working area. Now the nice thing about citric acid is that will dissolve in an equal amount of water, so you don't actually need a lot of water. And you don't need it fully dissolved, but uh, I just like to get it at least wet before I add it in. And then if there's a little bit left in there, you can still just kind of rinse out your beaker a little bit and not go over the one liter mark. Now this is perfectly fine to use as is. You can use this as a grape flavor without coloring, but if you want that grape color, you can add a few drops. Uh, so this is purple, but because of the acid, it's gonna turn blue. So I find three drops of purple and two drops of red creates this kind of nice lavender purple color. I don't like using a lot of dye in it, like commercial stuff is really dark. Uh, I find a light purple to be satisfactory, but it is optional. And these are just food dyes you find at any grocery store. And it will take a little bit, but it will turn mostly purple. It's pretty purple now, more of a red grape purple than, uh, but it takes a little bit of time depending on the acidity to get that purple color. To make this is really simple. You're just gonna take a glass of carbonated water and you're going to add your syrup directly to it. And typically you do one ounce, one and a half ounces. So that's one and a half. And you're going to get your purple soda. Now for a lot of people, this is not going to be sweet enough. So you may wanna use two to one simple syrup. Uh, this is a much lighter grape flavor, uh, not necessarily lighter grape flavor, but not as cloyingly sweet as the commercial stuff. And the aging is something that is definitely going to help this. It's a little coarse straight out of here. And you can modify it any way you want. So if you find that it's too floral, uh, you can just use straight methyl and thranolate wherever it is in here. Just note that it can it's not gonna be a shelf stable. Now this is kind of light, uh, more perfumey than I would have expected, but it still tastes like that kind of grape flavor. Uh, it does probably need more sugar uh, if you want that truly crushed Fanta type flavor. But on, this own, on its own, this is an interesting flavor. I do find it to be kind of more sophisticated as opposed to the grape crush thing. So, but if you're really looking for the grape crush thing, just use the methyl and thranolate, and that will really bring out that grape flavor or that artificial grape flavor. But overall, not bad. It's again, far more sophisticated than crush or Fanta. So that's it for grape soda. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next video.